Gray, I need your help. Yeah? How do you break a four-week sleep cycle? Oh, oh Mike. Mike. <laughs> I, I, I need your help with this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Tell me what's going on with you. Well, I mean, I, I've come back from my Hurley day. My Hurley day is over. And I'm suffering from pretty bad jet lag. I thought that I had mostly gotten over jet lag as a problem in my life. Like it takes me a day or two and I adjust. What, what do you, you think you thought you you thought you solved jet lag no. just as a general problem? I wouldn't say that I feel like I'd solved it. Uh, but it's more that like I've gotten used to my pattern that if I just do things in a certain way for like a day or two, just like make sure I stay awake, embrace the fact that I won't sleep the next day, wake up at a normal time and then I'm good. That's usually how I deal mm-hmm. with this stuff. No matter where I am, like even if I'm on the West Coast, like it just takes me like two days and I can get back into it. And that's mostly because I tend to live at like close to East Coast time in London. You know, like I, I'm, I'm usually like going to bed at 2 a.m., and I wake up, you know. Yeah, you you stay up pretty late. Yeah, so so it helps me adjust relatively well. But this time, this time is not good. Like, I've been home for three or four days, and I'm just not sleeping. And I feel terrible most of the day. And then, like, it comes to about seven o'clock at night, and I'm wired and ready to go. <sighs> I, you, have, you have all of my sympathies. Jet lag... Jet lag is the absolute worst. Surely, like, how has nobody fixed this problem? Why isn't there, like, a surefire pill to take or some kind of beverage to drink <laughs> that just fixes it? Uh, yeah. Th- that is what I want. I feel like there should be some kind of refreshing beverage you could just drink. And it's like, oh, great. They just give it to you when you get off the plane. Yeah. Now, now I'm all set. It turned out all, all, I needed, all I needed was some electrolytes at the right time. And, and now, now I'm set. But no. I've no. heard that there are like one of those Dreamliner planes changes the oxygen level and apparently that's supposed to help. But I'm not sure if I believe that either. But yeah, but see, jet lag is one of those things because the, the symptoms are like they're hard to define symptoms and they're slightly different for everybody. And this this then breeds a whole world of home remedies and just superstitions yeah. around what works or what doesn't work. Just stand on your head and count backwards from 10. <laughs> you fixed it. <laughs> I, I have tried so many, so many different things and I've just, I have found nothing. Nothing has any consistent success with trying to minimize it. I, I guess, asterisk, uh, the only thing I have found that successfully works is simply refusing to acknowledge the time zone of the place that you are in. That works. Uh, yeah. But other than that, uh, no, I have, I have found no. It doesn't work for a month, though. Like, I feel like I would have not really gotten anything useful done if I spent four weeks on London time in various places in the US. I feel like I would have... I really should have just not made that trip if that's what I was planning to do, right? Yeah, it, it's impossible. Uh, it's, it's not going to work out for you, Mike. Uh, so so um, I, I, have, I have nothing to help you with this. You were supposed to be my long-term travel guru. Oh. And this is, this is the one thing I truly need, you know? <laughs> oh, is this it? This is, the it. One, this is the one thing that you truly need, and I have, I have failed to deliver on this? You didn't help me with laundry, really, mm-hmm. and or just dealing with emotional trauma. So this was the one thing that, that I, I desperately need from you that I was hoping for, a real just CGP Grey brand life hack, and I have received just <sighs> no, deal with it no and or hacks. don't change your time, which is, you know... <laughs> Neither of those things. Neither of those things are helpful to me now. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand. The reason why I was also asking, like, I need your help with this is because, one, I, I too, would like a solution to jet lag that is simply magical. Uh, but the other thing is I have, I have also, since this summer, I, I have not been dealing with jet lag. Like, I've been home long enough that jet lag is not a problem. But what I, I have been dealing with is clearly my whole sleep cycle is just messed up from an entire summer of, no. of strain schedules and frequent travel. And it's not jet lag, but it's kind of a virtual jet lag when you're trying to simply iron out your sleep schedule. 
And this has been the like the bane of my last several weeks is is just trying to get my brain back into what I know is the optimal schedule for me for work and for happiness. And it's just like I cannot I cannot do it like I can feel my brain resisting getting put back into a regular schedule after two months, three months without a regular schedule. And as well, for me, the irony is not lost upon the fact that I have returned home with this terrible sleep cycle in what is probably the busiest two weeks of my year. These two weeks are the busiest two weeks of your year? iPhone season. Oh, of course. I, I was thinking, I was thinking, why is Mike so busy in yeah. early September? Uh, but yes. By the time of this course. episode comes out, the iPhone will have been shown to the world or will about to be shown to the world. So by the time Ooh. most people hear this, they're either getting ready for an iPhone keynote or have already seen it. Ooh, that's exciting. So they're living in a future where we have or do not have face unlocking. We have or do not have touch ID and a big screen. You know, the, 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 the people mm-hmm. they know, Gray, they, have, they lord that over us right now. We're stuck in the past. We're stuck in the past. Yeah. Although somehow, while we're recording this show, it feels like we're already in, in that glorious new iPhone future. Yeah. So while I'm talking to you right now, it feels slightly like time traveling, uh, but it isn't. But yes, of course, uh, for, for you in particular, for a man who does so many tech and tech adjacent shows, this would be the busiest season and not a good time to have a bunch of jet lag interfering with the rest of your work. No, luckily they didn't have the event or announce the event before I came home like mm-hmm. or, or that it just didn't overlap ba- like badly luckily when they announced mm-hmm. it they announced it was like it's going to be in two weeks time so I was able to just come home and then try and deal with myself and then get back to work again <laughs> so unfortunately I will just I will just live with my weird sleep cycle for now and hopefully in October I will have fixed it ready to go back to the US again so hooray <laughs> Hooray for for jet lag, I guess. <laughs> oh no, yeah. <laughs> I've just realized by the time that I get this thing fixed, I'll have to break it again. This is what happens. Mm-hmm. This is what happens when you have to do a bunch of, of travel. Mm-hmm. It's just it's it's frustrating, and and this kind this kind of thing really does take a while to sort out. Like getting it getting into, I, I find for me anyway personally, like the maybe the number one predictor of how well a day is going to go is if I got up at the time that I'm supposed to. Like if you had to, if you had to take a single data point and see if it was most correlated with what I would consider a productive day, that would be by far and away the single data point that would matter yeah. the most. And it's, it is very, because uh, like, unlike, unlike so many other things in our working life, sleep is a thing that, that is, is like you you really have no control over it. You can't you can't just knuckle down and and get to sleep harder than you're trying to get to sleep at this very moment. And at least for me, like if you wake up and your body wasn't ready to wake up, it it feels like you have woken up dead. It's it's just awful and it's it's so it's so hard to do anything productive. I don't know, it's, it's like a thing that is just interesting that I at least I find that as as time has gone on, like this matters more and more as as a thing that is is super important and is a thing that I, I focus on and, and try to keep on a regular schedule. Um, but yeah, after after the summer, it, I, like this is a, this is a thing that I have personally been struggling to get back into a regular schedule for a while. But it's like I can just I can feel my brain just pulling against against the regular schedule even though of course like it, it'd be better for me in the long run but like it doesn't that doesn't help you in, in the short run if you could choose to not sleep but lose 25 percent of your productivity would you take that wait i get an additional third of my life back sure you get all the time back okay but you are 25 percent less productive would you take that deal yeah yeah that seems like a great deal i'm getting 33 i'm getting a third of my life back and i'm only losing a quarter of productivity that it seems like an amazing deal okay what if you lost a third of your productivity so it just it just ended up balancing out would you take it then okay so 
when you say when you say balance out, you mean I get the same amount of stuff done that I get done now, but I'm also I never have to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's the trade off? Who who wouldn't take that? But I feel like people enjoy sleeping, right? I feel like that this is why I'm assuming. So there are people in the world that just would prefer to sleep if it, if, it should, if it all just ended up working out the same. Just take the sleep. But like I would t- even take the the option where it balances out because I would just end up playing more video games or whatever. Yeah, uh, of all, I mean, I I mean, I guess, I guess I could say in a minor, in a very minor way, I enjoy sleep, but that's only because sleep is it gets it's the your brain makes you like it because it's the solution to a problem. I only ever enjoy it after it's happened. I never want to do it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Except it, right now, actually, <laughs> right now, <laughs> <laughs> saying that uh, I, it's half past four in the afternoon. It might be pre- I feel like I could do with a good nap right now, but I, I mean, I guess the answer to your question is is no. Like, I don't, I don't feel like oh, sleep is the best. It's like I, I, I would much rather have the hours mm. back. I, I, I don't, I don't see sleep as a as a recreational activity that is worth a third of my life. And I, I, I can't imagine anybody would, would see it that way. I don't know. I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with how you like to spend your time, right? Like, part of it is because I would prefer to be working as much as I can when I'm awake and then spend the rest of the time just playing video games and doing the things that I don't want to do. But not everybody wants to, to work to that amount. So I guess like if all you wanted to do was put in eight hours, six hours, seven hours of work a day or whatever it is that you end up putting in and you're cool with that, like that's that's the way that you want to be, then maybe you would want the sleep. Yeah, but you could still just spend it as recreation time. Yeah, but I assume that there are some people that enjoy the the practice of, of sleep, right? They just like getting into bed and cozying up and just, just going away for a bit. I don't think that's Cortex listeners. I, th- I think the people who listen to Cortex... They're not people who are who are big enjoyers of sleep. I want to know in the Reddit. <laughs> in the Reddit, I just want to know: sleep or no sleep? So you got to tell me: sleep or no yeah. sleep? I, I'm I'm interested to know this now. If people would like to sleep or would would not like to sleep, I tell you what I'll do: I will post in the Reddit just a simple survey that you can click a link. It will take you somewhere. I just want to get a, a <laughs> idea now: sleep or no sleep? It'll be in the Reddit thread. You'll find it. And of course, all of the home remedies for how to take care of jet lag. Unsolicited, but doubtless will be there. You need some sleep, Mike. You can take a little nap during the show. Yeah, I'll, uh, actually, I'll, I'll see what's next in our document. I'll just get you talking and I'll pop in towards the end, assuming that I figure okay. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> uh, so I'll just go away. There's a sofa behind me. I'll just go and sit there for a little bit mm-hmm. and then I'll come back uh, when you're done with your frustrations. I've just come back from visiting my parents. They've moved house, and of course, setting up a new house is a big job. There's lots of things to do. And one of the things you need to do when you're setting up a house is get a mattress for the guest bedroom. Now, of course, since my parents listened to Cortex, there was only one choice of mattress that they were going to get. The Casper mattress was delivered before my arrival. But as I had never tried one in person, they saved it for me. So when I got home, on the very first day, there was no mattress set up for me to sleep on but there was a big Casper box in the room. And together, we opened it up. It was a genuinely exciting family event. To open the box, my dad and I arranged the mattress on the bed, we removed the plastic covering, and, just like Casper promises, the mattress self-inflates. Within mere moments, it was ready to go. That night, at the end of a day of long travels, I crawled into bed onto the Casper mattress for the first time. How would a mattress be without springs inside? How would a mattress be that came delivered in the mail? Well, I'm here to report that it was good. You could even say that it had just the right sink, just the right bounce. I was very glad that my parents had not carted with them the old guest mattress that I used to sleep on, full of springs and lacking in comfort. The Casper mattress, vastly superior. And that is as it should be. The Casper mattress was designed by a team of 20 engineers to make sure that their memory foam and open cell layer for maximum comfort were designed just so. Now, if you're wondering about buying a mattress through the mail, Casper has made it completely risk-free. There's free delivery and free returns to the US, Canada, and the UK. 
And when you set up that mattress, Casper gives you 100 nights to try it out. You'll only need one before you realize how great it is, but if there's any doubt in your mind, you can spend 25% of a year sleeping on that mattress to make sure it's perfect for you. And if for whatever reason you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. So you have nothing to lose except the poor quality sleep you're getting on that spring-filled mattress that you're currently sleeping on. Now that you've decided you're getting a Casper mattress, all you need to do is go to casper.com slash Cortex and use the code Cortex at checkout to get $50 towards any mattress purchase. That's casper.com slash Cortex to get $50 off. Thanks to Casper for supporting this show, and thanks to Casper for giving me excellent night's sleep at my parents' house. So of course, with the imminent release of a new iPhone comes a new release of iOS. iOS 11 is just around the corner. It's going to be with us soon. And we have, because we're the kind of people that we are, Mike, we've been running the betas for a while. Uh, I told myself, like I tell myself every year, look, I'm, I'm not going to install the beta. I'm, I'm going to wait a while. Uh, but of course, I have to give in. So I've been running the beta since the very first public beta that was available. And I was not able to resist. And just before it goes public, I thought this is, this is kind of a good, a good time to talk about a couple of, of, of little frustrations and also what's going on with the dock and our home screens. What do you say, Mike? Are you there, Mike? I mean, anytime you talk about home screens, I'm ready to go. You said the magic word. <laughs> I'm revitalized. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I think it is worth mentioning for a piece of long-term follow-up that you did not get your wish, right, of the opening of applications via a keyboard shortcut that nobody either maybe people listen to you but nobody's put it into place. I'm pausing here for a moment to think about how much I, I can say. I'll, I'll put it in vague ways that I I can say that I know this has been received and that there may be reasons that it doesn't happen that maybe I don't necessarily agree with, but I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows if an email could have been received or sent? No, no one could know. There is no way of knowing. Yeah, who knows if like a frustrating non-answer was received? Nobody. Nobody uh, could know. Certainly not me. Mm-mm, no way. Anyway, so yeah, I was I was hoping last time that for for just just barely just just like the tiniest of of keyboard shortcuts added and. That hasn't happened, and I don't think it's going to happen in the next uh, two weeks or week until the final version comes no. out. Uh, so we can assume that that's, that's definitely not the case. I think we can feel pretty sure of the fact that we are currently at beta 10. Uh, we're good. We're, this is what it's going to be, most likely. Yeah, I think so. so. So around this, one of the biggest changes with iOS on the iPad is, is the introduction of the dock on the bottom screen. And for someone like me and someone like you who spends a lot of time working on the iPad, I feel like that that dock on the bottom totally changes everything. Like it it really makes the iPad a a very different feeling device to work with than on the, the previous version of iOS. And I've been having just some some interesting interesting things about how do I how do I arrange my dock? Now on my iPad, how do I arrange my home screen on my, on my phone? And I feel like I'm I'm slowly going crazy because I can't I can't figure out what it is that I want to do even though I've been working with this for a long period of time. So I took some screenshots today, mm-hmm, Mike. Mm-hmm. Would you like to see what my current setup looks like on my various devices? You know I want to see. You don't have to ask me. You could send me these <laughs> messages just on a random day in the middle of the night and I'd be happy to get them. You know, <laughs> anytime. If you have your iPad around, mm-hmm. I am legitimately curious to see what your home screen looks like. Because I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm very open to trying to figure out how, how, how have people set up things on their iPads and on their various devices. Do you want both or just one? Hashtag multipad lifestyle. I want whatever you will give me. All right. I'm going to give you three home screenshots and you can give me back whatever you want. Okay, so while yours come through to me, I'm going to go and get my iPad yeah. from the other room because I only have one of them with me right now and then I can send them both to you. Yeah, you go do that.
Okay, so screenshots have been exchanged. Screenshots have been exchanged. I have yours. You have mine. Okay, let me talk about what's what's going on in my mind here, Mike. Mm. So in iOS 11, especially on the iPad, the, the dock is a, of paramount importance. It's the way to get to your apps because if you have an app that's on the dock, you can just drag it from the dock right onto the screen yep. and so that you can go into the multi-app mode or you can have it hover over. Whereas apps that are on your home screen, to me, the home screen now becomes like a dead space on your iPad. There are apps that you can launch, but only if you are already at the home screen. And there's no there's no way to like get to the home screen to get to an app to then put it into the multi view mode. So because of this, I have decided that on my iPads the home screen is dead to me. Huh. Like I I don't I don't want to put a single app on my iPad home okay. screen because I feel like what is the point of this? All it is is a worse app launcher. There's there's no there's no point to this at all. Hmm. So I am I am I have banned all app icons from the home screen on my iPads. It dock or nothing. You took the nuclear approach. Well, here I actually don't think this is the nuclear approach because I, like I feel like the architecture of iOS 11 on the iPad so encourages you to use the the dock that it feels it feels like a penalty having apps almost anywhere else. But here's where I'm here's where I'm going crazy, Mike, because the iPhone doesn't work this way. Oh, OK. Right. Again, I wanted to say where we are in the world right now, because mm -hmm. it might. We don't know yet. Right. We just as, as this is as we stand right now, who knows what could happen with the next iPhone. But yeah, go on. The iPhone doesn't work in this way. I understand that. Yeah. The iPhone doesn't work like this. Now, there may be. If there is a merciful God in the universe, mm -hmm. when the next phone comes out, the next phone may work more similarly to the way the iPads do. Yeah. There may be a little dock that swipes up from the bottom. You know, it, it could be better when the next iPhone comes One out. One can only hope. One can only hope. But you know what? It's, it's not going to be. It's not going to be the same because there's not going to be a universe in which you can put eight icons in the dock on your phone. Yeah. It's only going to be four, right? And maybe a folder. Still, that's going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not going to be multitasking on the phone, presumably. Uh -huh. So lots of things, lots of things work differently. So I, I, I feel like I am trapped and, and trapped in this universe where consistency is not possible. That there, there is no, there is no solution that works everywhere the same that I want it to work. So I feel like when I'm using my phone, I'm, I'm losing my mind about how do I launch apps on my phone versus launching apps on my iPad. And as a result of this, like what you are seeing, what you are seeing in these screenshots is just my current state of arranging things. Yeah. Which is not good. But what, what I can't tell you, what, what, I, got, what I, I don't even want to know is how how many different ways I have tried arranging things, how how many different placements I have tried, like different full like I'm I'm going crazy because there's a lack of consistency. Because as listeners to the show will know, we've talked about home screens a few times, and there's been something that for for the entirety of my iOS use has been exactly the same, which is three icons in the dock. And those icons have been incredibly stable. Notes, Launch Center Pro, and OmniFocus. And I felt like that was a real, a real centering location to here is a thing that is consistent across all of the devices that you use. There's like a little, a little launching station for the things that you want to access quickly and consistently everywhere. And it's the same on all of the devices. And then above that, because I live the multi-pad lifestyle and because I have a phone as well, you can arrange the icons that you use in particular on this device mm. on the home screen. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's like, but all of that is gone now. So I'm, I'm just going crazy. I, I 
deconstructed my doc. I've put some new stuff in there yeah. and I'm trying to figure out what to do. But I'm just, I'm going crazy, Mike. I can I'm tell. going absolutely crazy and I don't know what to do. All right. So episode to episode, we've, we've switched the crazy. All right. That's, it's all on you now, buddy. Uh, I have, I, we have a lot, I think, that we want to get to about this today. But I, mm-hmm. I just, we need to just go over. I, okay, we're gonna come back to the doc, all right, and like kind of what that is. But I just have a bunch of questions first because I'm looking at these images, and it's all. Yeah, here's the thing. You you ask questions away because I don't even know what's happening in my world anymore. Right, so like I, I don't, I don't know. What I don't understand from a fundamental perspective is you're complaining about consistency, but you have inconsistent apps in both the docs on your iPads. I don't get that. I don't get it. Like you can look at my okay. screenshots and you'll see the docs are the same. The home screens differ in slight ways depending on what I do on those iPads, but the docs are the same. What I'm putting in them and where they go, and you have like all different apps in all different placements, and like some apps are on the dock on one and not on the other. Like there is no consistency, and you are making it inconsistent for yourself. Okay. Evernote. Look at Evernote just sitting there in the dock. My word, where are we in 2017? Sitting in the in the dock, laughing at me. I know. Right? What That's is what that thing doing. it's next to? What is that that red fox arrow thing? What is that? Oh, that that's a Wikipedia viewer. Oh, it's, um, yeah, I've called, seen called, this before. It's really good. It's uh, called V V for Wiki. Mm-hmm. I think is mm-hmm. the what to search for. It, it's a it's a really great uh, Wikipedia viewer. So here's where I'm trying to focus on consistency in my world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Step one, I decided that it was, it was time to let Launch Center Pro go. Ah, uh, okay. Which right, may be one of the longest running apps on my phone that has changed the least. Mm-hmm. It's like that uh, has been around for forever. We were just talking about it, about the icon. Well, well this is why on, on, on the episode Out of Time, uh-huh. uh, it, it comes up as a thing, and I didn't want to specify anything at that point in time, but I had already, when we recorded that show, gotten rid of Launch Center Pro. Right, because on an episode Out of Time, you cannot acknowledge the time. Yeah, who, yeah, right? yeah, who knows when it exactly. occurs. Is that the rule for episodes Out of Time? I don't understand how that works. So I got rid of that. Now, I have tried, I have tried other launchers, and I think other launchers are probably fine for other people. <laughs> uh, but uh, right, it's like I don't want to denigrate lo- other launchers that people might use because they are they are good and they do. But like, there's a bunch of things I didn't like, and I'm I'm very picky about this. And there's like the reason I had stuck with Launch Center Pro for as long as I had is because I could it solved a particular need very well. So I was thinking it through and realizing 95 percent of what I was using Launch Center Pro for in the past year was really as a way to kick off a bunch of workflows. So I had a whole bunch of stuff in the workflow app and Launch Center Pro was just a faster way to launch a workflow than going directly into the workflow app itself. Mm-hmm. This, what I'm about to say is going to sound crazy to people, but actually is, I, I think is great and is the, the part of the system I'm, I'm the happiest with, is I replaced Launch Center Pro with a folder that just has shortcuts to workflows. No, this is better. The, the way you were doing it, was worse like Mm -hmm. opening launch center pro to launch workflows is a i think a slower way of doing it than what you're currently doing which is to save because you can save workflows to the iphone home screen with like this weird hack of safari basically and this is quicker having that folder there and then hitting the button that's one less tap the reason I stuck with Launch Center Pro as, as long as I did is it was lightning fast to do it. Mm. It actually is a little bit slower with the folder. Mm. Okay. Uh, because Apple's like, look at our beautiful animation. Uh, uh, yeah, and, okay. You're getting uh, hit by the animation right. speed. Okay. Yeah. Whereas, especially if Launch Center Pro was still kept in memory, it was essentially instant. So I, like, there's a little bit of a speed trade off here, but it's, it's fine. I still think this is a better way to do it, though. It might not be faster, but I think this is this is cleaner. But yeah. Yeah, so this is this is cleaner. Uh, it does have a disadvantage that I have to manually arrange everything so that it's the same on all of the devices. There's no syncing anymore, mm. uh, the state of what the launch center is. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's fine. That's a fine trade-off. And if someone looks in the screenshots, what they will see is dead center on all of my devices, there is a folder. And that folder has nothing but buttons which launch workflow yeah, actions. Yeah, it's, it's and, dead center, but not always relative. What do you mean, not always relative? It's not relative to the green and red. 
Okay, no, don't, 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 we'll, we'll get into this in a second. We'll get into this in a second, Mike, right? Because <laughs> so I've many thought layers. about this for a long time. This is like the onion of home screens we're in right now. No, but listen, okay, listen, listen. Look at those three screens. Yep. The workflow folder is it's dead, dead center. center. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Look it at is. look at those the okay, little dots okay, that are supposed okay. to show you the home screen or the widgets. I can see that it. is it's the fine. center, right? It's fine. And the folder mm -hmm. is directly below those dots, or as close as a person can make it. Yes, it is. Right? It is. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not perfectly aligned <laughs> because of some aesthetic choices that Apple mm -hmm, has made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but we'll just let that slide yeah. for right now. Yeah, that is It'd weird. Be perfectly isn't it? aligned. It's fine it on the isn't. iPhone, not 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 fine yeah. on the big iPad. Yeah, not not fine on the i on the on the iPad. So I bet I bet that doesn't bother you at all. It does very much so. Okay. All right. So this is this is the anchor around which we're building everything. Is I've gotten rid of Launch Center Pro. I have found an adequate solution. It's going to go in the center on all of the devices. This is where we begin. My assumption here is that these are all to launch most likely toggle actions would be my assumption nothing in that center folder is for toggle we'll get to this okay good good good, good. all right i thought that was going to be the end of the discussion and i was going to lose my mind <laughs> <laughs> no uh actually uh most of those launch center things are pre-programmed stuff for OmniFocus and a, like a couple of other things. Okay, the purple ones I assume are OmniFocus and then there's other yeah, stuff. Yeah, pur purple That's ones cool. are OmniFocus stuff. That's cool. That's yeah. all I really need to know. Uh, I just needed to know what they did and that's enough for me. It's all inconsistent now because I, I haven't quite decided on like what this new setup is going to be. So I haven't worried about making uh, sure it's consistent on every single device, but I'll get there at some point. I've just noticed something else that you've done. Okay, what have you noticed? In the iPad folders, you've put blank icons in there. So it's always the same. Yes. Oh. Okay, so this <laughs> Great, is- I love you so this much. Is what, <laughs> this is one way, this is one way I am trying to force <laughs> consistency out of an operating system that is trying to force me into an inconsistent state. Because you want the three by three grid everywhere. Because the thing with a launcher is that it's muscle memory, <laughs> right? It's, you're not like scanning and looking for a thing. You're trying to make it oh, muscle memory. Gosh. So the iPhone only allows a three by three grid in the folder. Mm -hmm. So I, I am forcing a three by three grid in the folder on the iPad. Sure. But as you can see, that means the three by three grid is not centered and it can't possibly be centered because the iPads want a four by four grid in the folder. So this is this is a trade off I'm just going to have to make that the grid will be off center. But there's there's no there's no way to manage that for the launcher one. And the, the muscle memory of where the buttons are is vastly more important. All of these images are in our show notes so you can play along at home. I just wanted to reinforce Yeah, I think that. you have to look at this. Yeah, there's, you cannot conceptualize this unless you're seeing it. So you have to see it. Uh, if you're driving, just wait till later. We're all good. Yeah. But you need to see this. Rethink number two. Okay. Can't believe we're just on number two, but okay. I know you, ooh, you, can't, you can't believe we're just on number two. I feel like I'm barely halfway through whatever's going to happen. Like, because I'm, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. so, I'm still so dissatisfied. Oh, like, we're I just have talking so many about. more questions. Like, there's things, I keep seeing things that make me laugh. And because I, I know what you're doing, but I just need to double check. Thing number two that happened is there's a change in iOS 11, mm -hmm. which I really like, mm -hmm. which is that you can put uh, notes in Control Center. Mm. And so, I realized I don't need notes on the dock anymore because the way I use notes is probably different from the way almost everybody uses notes in that I, I use it solely to just write down something. And then once a week, I kind of go through and cull all these random pieces of text throughout the week. Like I don't use notes as an organizational system of any kind. Okay. Notes is just, I need to write something down and I know future me will do whatever is necessary with this piece of text at a later point in time. Okay, a couple of questions on that. Yeah. Are you writing them down with a keyboard or with a pencil? Uh, with, with, a, with a keyboard almost all the time. Okay. And so I'm assuming that you're taking these things and either putting them in a task manager or inside of a project that you're already writing and or inside of your beloved Evernote. Would be my assumption. Yeah, it's like it's just anything, right? It, it, like it's like um, 
simple case, like somebody recommends a movie and I'm like, oh, okay. And I make a, I make a note of the movie title. And then later I'll properly sort that into like the place where I keep a list of here's a bunch of movies to watch sure. or books that have been recommended or right. It's, it's just like little pieces of text that don't go anywhere in particular. Mm-hmm. And it's not worth the effort of properly sorting them at the time. Right. Okay. So it's different to me where like, if it's text, it goes in notes, right? If it's not a task, because tasks never go in notes, it always just like, so I would have my list of movies to see would be in notes, for example. I know that that is the way most people mm-hmm. would use it, but it's just it's just not the way that I use sure, it. Sure, I get that. If anybody uses the app called Drafts, I use notes the way Drafts is intended to be used. Like that's, yeah. that's like a, a little comparison there. Um, so it's not a storage facility of any point. As a starting point for text, never the final point. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, And I really like this little change in iOS uh, 11 that you can do it from control center because it also means that it's it's um, it's much more accessible, much more quickly in a bunch of scenarios. So I love that the phone is locked and I can just swipe up from control center and and go to notes and type something and and it just goes into the system and I never even need to unlock the phone. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great thing that you can do that now if you want to set it up that way. It is a really nice addition. And so that that change meant, okay, well, notes doesn't need to be on the dock anymore, right? Notes can just go away. Yeah, and in, in an interesting way, that kind of reinforces your use case. Yeah, it, it's almost like it, it's designed exactly for that. Like, oh, someone just said a thing, you want to write something down really quickly, and you just want it to go into the system. Or you're not, you're not filing it at that point in time. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad about that. But again, I'm all like muscle memory because this is a thing that happens lots so i want i just want to know that whatever device i'm using i've built it into my brain that oh the way you now type down a thing is just pull up control center hit new note and just type it and and done right so this is no longer a a doc first activity Mm -hmm. omnifocus has also been removed from the doc but this is a complicated thing we'll just we'll just have to get get to later right for very for various reasons OmniFocus is not going to be on the dock anymore, but it's like I can't, I can't even articulate. Of your iPhone, you mean? Yes, it's not, it's not on the dock of the iPhone because it's on the dock of one of the iPads. I know, I know. And is, reinforcing the inconsistency, but you know, whatever. Uh, yes, I know, I know. Yes, that's why we'll just. It's not going to be on the dock on the iPhone. We'll just, we'll give it. <laughs> oh, I just noticed Todoist is there as well. Wow, look at you! Would you? Would you look at you, Mister To Do Pants? You got them all would, going. Would on. you stop? Would you stop jumping ahead? Mike? Like, I, <laughs> I can't help it. You shouldn't have given me the images. You know, like I can't, I can't help it. Okay. So there was then a long period of thinking, well, what the hell goes on my dock now? For a while, I tried nothing on the dock except that one folder. Uh, but that looks really dumb. And it makes, it makes no sense on the iPads. Uh, because again, like you're punished for not using the dock on the iPads and just just having the one little launcher folder is, is ridiculous. What I have eventually settled on for my dock icons, there's a green plus and there's a red X. Mm. And they're from, I was trying to think, what is, the, what is the thing that I now do the most in the day? I've replaced, I've replaced my launcher. I've replaced the thing where I'm typing in stuff. What is the next most frequent activity? And of course, that is everybody's favorite topic, time tracking. Oh, no. Time tracking is the thing that I do the most. I promise we won't talk it's about this for too long, listeners. I, I really, I just want, we, we'll, we'll get through this as part as quickly as we can. But yes, go on. <laughs> I promise you that we will as well, because there isn't that much to say about it, except what do these two buttons do? Mm-hmm. They are also workflows. Yep. So the green one simply launches mm. a, a master workflow that allows me to very quickly select what is the activity that I'm doing right now. This is what I'd assumed they were. Uh, and I thought that the mm-hmm. middle folder was related to just triggering specific trackers, but that that mm-hmm. makes sense. Like the green and red, it makes perfect sense. One is to start yeah. and one is to stop. I mean, and I have these, but they're in, uh, I have them in my widgets in Notification Center. So this is a thing that I had tried for a long time. W- Workflow has a fantastic widget. Uh, it's really, really great. Mm-hmm. But basically in, I- in iOS 10, there was an option to say, hey, your notification center, it- it's dumb. Uh, I don't ever use it. I don't care. Remember what the thing I swiped down last time was. Right. So if mm-hmm. I've p- pulled down the widgets, always just have the widgets there. But iOS 11 seems really proud of their notification center and they've removed this option. So 
I like in theory, I would want to use the widget to launch and to stop my time tracking, like across all devices, that'd be a way to do it consistently. But that that extra swipe really annoys me every time. Doesn't it work if you just swipe to the left? Okay. But this is this is a thing that then becomes a little bit in my mind like it like an inconsistent thing. Like which device am I using? How how do I open up that device? Like hmm. am I on the lock screen? Is the lock screen open or is the lock screen not? Like I tr- I tried it with the widget, but it's it's just a little bit of an annoyance. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't feel that. And it's also I, I don't I don't I don't well, feel that annoyance. Uh, but here's here's the use case that I'll here's the use case that I will give you, which is I'm on the iPad doing something and I want to trigger the timer. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Where do I go? You have to pull down I or can't, go home and yeah, it's yeah, right. it's a thing. I can't yeah. yeah, there's like an so it's not the same every time. And this this again is where muscle memory is really important. Like this is an activity that I'm going to do dozens of times a day. It has to be something that I just don't think about. So that that moment of being on the iPad with the apps open is like, ah, it, it's I have to think about it for a second, and now it's now it's all ruined. So that this is what ended up with the like the the most sensible thing to do was to put the time tracking stuff in the dock. And so I'm I'm thinking of it from the perspective of the most space constrained device, which is the iPhone, which you can only put three icons in the dock if you want it to look nice. So now I have my three dock icons. Mm-hmm. And so now we come to the iPads. Okay. And so I have given you two screenshots mm-hmm. because we live the multi-pad lifestyle. Hashtag. Yes, hashtag multi-pad lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one with the standard Apple wallpaper, which is like the exploding paint. Uh, this is my office iPad. So this is the one that I'm primarily using for writing. And then the one with uh, the black sand beach, this is the everything else iPad. Okay. So the writing iPad is reasonably okay because the use cases are are very constrained. Mm -hmm. And this is where I feel the happiest because it's like I want to use Ulysses to write. I want to use GoodNotes for the physical writing. Uh, I use Bear as a to organize a bunch of notes, and then I, and then of course I have Evernote and a Wikipedia app, and it's like th- this is easily ninety five percent of the time I'm going to spend on this iPad, so I can get it all in the dock and I can get it arranged reasonably nicely. Now the thing that I'm trying to do to preserve my mental muscle memory is because since docks are variable in size, there's three muscle memory points here: center left hand side right hand side so this is what i want now to be the same across all devices Mm -hmm. so the launching folder is in the center the plus to start the timer is on the left and the x to stop the timer is on the right this is this is what's going to be the same across all devices and all that means now is i need to put a symmetrical number of apps in between those points so on my writing ipad i have three apps between the left and the middle. And on the right hand side, I have two apps plus a folder that contains everything else that's on the iPad. Since I've decided that there will be no apps on the home screen, that means everything else goes into the infinity folder that holds all of the other apps that are going to exist on the iPad. So this this is this is the idea of my doc solution is you have one folder that's the infinity folder. I have three muscle memory points, and then I fill in the rest. That's that's the idea of what's going on. Can I ask you a question about the muscle memory thing? Please. Why didn't you put all three in the middle on everything? Because on the big iPad, because you have the recents, it's not on the far right. In iOS 11, you have this option of, because the dock is so important, iOS will put three suggested apps in your dock on the right side yeah and these you don't have control over they just they just appear they're the suggestions they're they're what apple thinks you want to have Mm -hmm. now there's there's like a funny bit of space that's between these apps and the other apps that makes everything kind of off center and 
having the three right in the middle but not exactly in the the middle is makes it more obvious that things are off center to me like it, it just visually uh, bothered me more okay so you tried it yeah okay i cool. tried it but it just looked weird mm. and i can in my mind sort of mentally place those suggested apps in a, in a different location. And you'd like the suggested apps enough to keep it on the big iPad because it's not on the small Well, one. well, we're 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 trying with the, we're trying a few things here, right? right? But okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get to this in a second. It also helps that the the red X I press far less than the start button, right? So it it matters less that that one is in the exact right spot. But for me, for my brain, this just works even though it should seem like keeping everything in the center would, would make more sense. But I, I don't, for like, for me, for somehow, this is just what seems to make more sense is put them at the edges, even though on one of these devices, there isn't quite an edge. So, th so this is what I am trying. But this again, like this world of inconsistency is crazy making because on the iPad that I use for everything, I do have these suggested apps because it's it's really useful to have them there, but I I don't want them on my dedicated sort of writing office iPad because they're often just suggesting apps to me which are in the dock already, right? Or they're things that I've just used and and their changing is annoying. Like it's it's not helpful because on that device I'm able to get just about everything that I want in the dock in the dock. This is this is where I am with the setup of things. Uh, I have a couple of observations. One, I enjoy the fact that you've decided that you are unwilling to take the colors of some icons and have recreated icons of your own, uh, books and audiobooks. I'm assuming that they are, they are literally just shortcuts to launch iBooks and Audible. <laughs> and you have taken matters into your own hands and have gone for a more pleasing, green, to you, green color than the yellows. <laughs> uh, I have taken matters in my own hands. There's another one that you have missed there, which I is flashcards. Flash cards. No, I, I hadn't missed that. I had assumed that that wasn't real, but the books and audio books were, were more obvious to me. Yeah. Flashcards is uh, a shortcut to the program I've been using for years and years, which is called Anki, which is, it's great. It's a, it's a fantastic flashcard program, uh, but it has a very ugly app mm. that I don't think has been updated in years and years. I can tell how long you've been using it because you keep calling it a program, which is very yeah, strange. You know, what? That's, you know what? That's totally... Yeah, it is a program because <laughs> I, I started using it in college on a computer. <laughs> that is the program. Everything else is an app. I love, I yeah, love yeah. that your brain made that distinction. This is a, this is a computer program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would never have used that. And then because uh, Amazon finally introduced proper text alignment in their app, I, uh, I was able Kindle. to sort of switch back to using Kindles, uh. which is great. Uh, but but uh, that that Kindle app icon is horrifically ugly. Do, do not uh, it's like it. I, I, I will not allow that on my screen. Like, I don't want to have to look at that. Uh, it's like, I, I hate that the apps have the words beneath the app to begin with. And then any any app which also has to write its own name on the app icon in addition to the title underneath. It's like, I can't deal with that. It's, it's horrible. It's like, it was a Kindle. Like, yeah, I get it, Kindle. Like, I see the word twice. I, I hate it. So, I, yeah, I just made a, I made a much better icon using, using workflow than, than they use. Um, so, yes, that's, I have, some, I have some replacement app icons cool. for ones that are, that are unacceptable. Except for the fact that you're running three to-do apps on your iPhone. I, th I think that's most of my general questions. On, on my phone there, just, just to be clear, that, that to-do row, mm -hmm. which is four icons to -do that have lane, check marks. <laughs> yeah, it's a to-do lane. <laughs> just quickly so people don't think I'm going crazy. It's like the do is for reminders that are related to a particular time or timers that I want to run. As we've discussed in the past, but we don't need to... Uh, go over here again it is useful to split certain kinds of tasks between to do and omnifocus uh so omnifocus is generally like big project stuff and to do is much much smaller things uh and then to do ist is what i use to communicate with my personal assistant so that is like shared tasks between the two of us oh wunderlist is dead oh yes yeah wonderlist is gone. Maybe I should call this one to Doist. Like I have to give this one a new name now because Wunderlist is gone. 
<laughs> no, you don't. No, we don't need to do that. To Mike. Doist is actually a pretty funny name. I like that. But I use Todoist and love it, so I I wouldn't dare give it a different name. Even though Wunderlist is the way that that app should be pronounced anyway. Um, yeah. To Todoist, interesting. Okay, what do you think of Todoist? Because it's what I use every day. I mean, I extol its virtues. I like the automation. I bet that's pretty good for you if you're using it for shared tasks to have things automated from it. It's probably pretty good. I actually, I actually don't use any of the automation huh. uh, features in it. This, this is a case where um, basically my assistant and I were running up against some limitations in Wonderlist. We just ran into some things where like this isn't, this isn't working great mm. anymore. Um, and primarily, one of the things was like the need to pri- be able to prioritize certain tasks above others. She is the one who is ninety five percent using this, and I am, I am simply like adding tasks and adding comments. So I feel like I I can't really give a fair review of Todoist. Yeah. Like what what I what I do use of it, I, I can say like I'm not a huge fan and it feels like there's some really obvious things that that are missing. But but I can say that it is definitely a better collaboration solution when your collaboration gets more complicated. Uh like that that's clearly the case. Goodbye, Wunderlist. Goodbye. It's been a it's been a pleasure. I feel I feel a little exhausted from all the explaining I've done mm. of this of this setup that I have here, Mike. And I, f- I feel like I've I barely even scratched the surface. It might be your time for a nap. Yeah, it might be it might be my time for a nap. This episode of Cortex is brought to you in part by our friends at Blue Apron, the number one recipe delivery service with the freshest ingredients. Blue Apron's mission is quite simple. They want to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone while supporting a more sustainable food system. To do this, they do a few different things. They set the highest standards for their ingredients to build their community of home chefs, and they also give you everything that you need. Every single ingredient is included in the box, just the amount that you require. They reduce food waste and make it super simple for you to cook. They also provide you with these easy-to-follow step-by-step recipe cards, so you've got everything you need right there. And that is how they're going to achieve their mission. For less than $10 a meal, Blue Apron will deliver seasonal recipes with these amazing ingredients for you to cook at home. And their ingredients are so awesome that Blue Apron offers a freshness guarantee, so everything will arrive ready to cook, or they'll make it right. Right now, you can choose from a variety of new recipes, or you can let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Right now, you could have garlic butter shrimp and corn with green bean salad and roasted purple tomatoes, skillet vegetable chili with cornmeal and cheddar drop biscuits, or maybe even soy glazed pork and rice cakes with bok choy and marinated green beans. There's no weekly commitment. You'll just get your deliveries when you want them. And right now, you can go to blueapron.com slash cortex to check out this week's menu and get three meals for free with your first purchase, including free shipping. You're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals at Blue Apron. So just go to blueapron.com slash cortex and check it out today. I want to thank Blue Apron for their support of this show. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. What do you use the two different iPads for? Like, what are those? What are what are the use cases for you of your two devices right now? So, primarily, like the primary use cases are home and out of home. So, at uh, home okay. I use the twelve point nine, and away from home I use the ten point five. But I do use the ten point five a lot at home if I'm going to be doing things like reading Twitter and stuff like that. I I may just grab the 10.5 because it's just easier to mm-hmm. hold and use because it's smaller mm-hmm. and lighter, but like the primary is home and away, which is why I take steps to set them up very similarly. They're not mm-hmm. exactly okay. the same. So like some of the folders and the placement of some apps on the home screen is different, but that's not a thing that I worry about too much because if it's not in the dock, I'm opening it via Spotlight. Right. And so like for me, I I am the reason I still have apps on my home screen is because they're really just a organization thing. It's just like a place for me to put the apps because I open mm-hmm. the majority of apps from from Spotlight. All right. Okay. So so that makes sense since you are doing the same kind of things on both devices. Mm-hmm. It's it's a simple it's simply the size factor and convenience factor of of moving it or not moving it. Exactly. That, that makes it, so. That's why you want the dock the same everywhere because otherwise you would be losing your mind. And my steps are like so. I have less. 
I, there, there are. Uh, you can have more apps in the dock on the twelve point nine, but I actually keep mm-hmm. less because I like the consistency. I have noticed an inconsistency, which I want to rectify. That Dropbox on the large iPad is in the dock on its own, but on the uh, the small iPad, it's in a folder. Although I expect as soon as Dropbox update for the Files app on iOS eleven. Uh, I won't need it anymore, really. Because yeah, I'll just yeah, be using yeah, the files app. I'm kind of just waiting for that point. So the dock for me is really like these are the apps that I'm using most on my iPad. And I think it reinforces the fact that I say I use the iPad for work because they are work apps. Like mm-hmm. all of those. That's what they are. Um, and the reason that they are all there is because these are the applications that I'm most frequently using in split views. Um, so mm-hmm. I keep them in the dock because it's way easier that way to just flick up and just drag it to where I need it to be. Which, just mm. for the record, because there was a lot of a, uh, I think there's a lot of inconsistent opinions about how people feel about this. I love the new multitasking in iOS 11. I mm-hmm. think it's fantastic. I think it is superior in almost every way. It just takes time to get used to and learn. But I, I absolutely love it. I love all the dragging because I'm able to visualize where everything's going to be. iOS is very visual. Um, I think that that is a it, there. I think there is a key to being able to work on iOS in 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 the if you like things visual. Like, I think that mm-hmm. that is a thing that you have to just get used to. Is that you like to be able to see things. You like to be able to see the movement of things, um, and being able to physically drag applications to where I want them to be and have them snap into a place and move them all around. And the the additional flexibility that iOS 11's multitasking has is amazing, and I love it. And I've changed some of my workflows, and they're changed now, and I would never want to change them back. (laughs) Yeah, I I do, again, just want to make it really clear that I am also like in favor of of the changes, and I think it's I think it's really great the way that they have done it. I've just been advocating for something on top of that. Very minor thing on top of that. But yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, there are things that I would like to, to for, the, for it to do that are different. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, I am a real proponent of the changes that Apple has made. Yeah. So a thing that I have found really interesting about using iOS over this long period of time is with my two iPads, one that has this dedicated purpose, which is writing and research, and, and the other one, which is the everything iPad, all kinds of administrate, all kinds of work. I see both sides of how this works. So on my dedicated iPad, I feel like this is exactly what Apple is really optimizing for. I can put essentially all of the applications that I want to use on the dock. And on my writing iPad, every app does have a consistent buddy that it stays with. Ulysses and Bear... I'm always opening together. One's the main writing app, and then the other one is for auxiliary notes. Workflow and do are side by side. They're always together. Like to do and OmniFocus stay together as a little pair. So on this device, I have consistent pairs, which is great. It's nice to see the things that I want next to each other, next to each other all the time. And I also have the vast majority of my work is just there on the dock and easily accessible. And it's like, this is great. I feel like this is exactly what this was this was designed for. Uh, but I do still feel like on my everything iPad, like I'm just, I'm losing my mind and it's it, I still find it very clunky and, and frustrating to work with because there I just, I just don't have consistent pairs of apps and... I, I I find myself always wishing it was it was a bit more like spaces on on Mac OS where I could say like I I want to define these two apps as together and don't don't break them apart if I happen to to go to something else briefly like it's I I feel like 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 I'm building castles out of sand like for like for example this morning I was doing like storyboarding feedback with the animator and so like that is a process that has a bunch of apps that I want to use and it's like it's just I just keep finding it clunky to be constantly like setting up pairs but then I want to break them down because I want to bring in a third app but I want to go back to the the previous thing I'm I'm still finding it frustrating for like intensive use of a large number of of varied apps but like I, on the smaller case it's it's great and perfect 
but it's it's more frustrating the the larger number of apps you use. I think the fundamental problem of people that feel the way that you do is thinking of apps as pairs. I don't think that Apple ever really asked you to do that. You decided to think of it that way on your own, right? But well, what I mean about the the, the pairs though is. It's not the thinking of them as pairs. It's the switching. Like, I, here's the use cases. Like, I have one major app. So, so like, what I was doing this morning is the perfect case. So, I am I'm watching a movie that's a storyboard. So, this is like the main thing that I want to look at. And then on the side, I want to be able to switch between three different things. Like, I want to have notes that I'm taking in bear. I need to be able to talk to the animator in Slack. And there's a couple of other things where I need, like I need to bring up good notes to be able to make a quick sketch to make something that's clear. And then Dropbox to send a link back to the animator who I'm talking in Slack. But I never want to close the the movie that I'm watching, which is the thing that is being commented on. Like that workflow, which is still very easy to do on a computer is is frustrating because of the the time it takes to switch the app on the side and it's also frustrating because of the the inconsistent steps of Mm -hmm. how do i summon these apps like where is this app that i'm trying to summon like let me get it from spotlight when i get it from spotlight i have to drag it over into just the right spot i have to wait for the little animation to show me that it's going to go there like rapid switching between a few things is is noticeably slower than rapid switching between a few things was under the old system. And I want to be really clear. I'm not asking for that old system. That yeah, was crazy. In, in iOS 10, you could use the command tab action to switch out just what was in the left pane. I understand that. I do miss that, but I don't want it back. There's other weird consistency problems that I, I sort of thought were bugs at first in iOS, but I think are not bugs which is when you do the command tab switcher, what apps show up in that list? It doesn't show everything. And I don't understand what it's supposed to be showing. That is something that I think is wrong. Um, However, Apple are deciding to make that list is is wrong because it should show everything and it should show pairs, but it doesn't. Yeah, and it should show things that I've just touched. So it, it feels like this, the thing that it seems to miss the most is I've summoned an app from Spotlight and dragged it into an overview setting or like a not main view. And it's like, then it doesn't show up in the command switcher. It's like, I want that. I was just there. Like that also adds to this frustration of trying to switch between multiple apps. Like it's so, so like, I guess this is, this is one of the things that also just doesn't help with like, what is my doc setup going to be? And how am I going to set up these iPads is, the use case where I want to have the most number of things, mm-hmm. I feel like I really need to cram the dock full of stuff. And and this is where you can you can see on my everything iPad screenshot. Like I have I have the infinity folder, I have the launcher folder, but I'm also trying to make a little communications folder, which is like here here are the little apps that I'm I'm where I'm talking to people and I'm, I find myself switching in and out of very frequently and trying to put them in a folder on the dock so I can get access to them more quickly for dropping into the workspace that I'm, that I'm using. Like I'm, I'm trying to get around this, but I don't, I don't have a, a great solution that feels like, wow, I'm really flying through my work on this iPad. It, it still feels really clunky for me to do that. So I can see in the specific use case that you've posted in that you want to use three apps plus the video, right? And I'm mm-hmm. assuming picturing picture isn't working for you here for, for whatever reason that might be. It's not really worth getting yes. into. Um, yeah, d- yeah, the details don't matter. But picturing picture is either the view isn't large enough or the app that you use and doesn't support it, whatever. Um, I can see for that where it's frustrating, right? But because you're watching a video, I think for basically any other work, flow issue you can just deal with switching into a different app for a moment right like if you need four apps we'll just you're using three of them because you can use three if you slide over and then you just command tab out to the other app entering whatever you need to go in there and go back the specific use case that you're posing is tricky because you want to be watching the video at all times um but you know just I would just say like it's frustrating, but just pause the video, right? Like that that's that's the workflow you will end up getting yourself into, I reckon. Just like, well, I'll pause for a moment and do what I need to do and go back. Um 
I get that. There have been some workflows that I have had to change as well. But I take this small frustration because the system as a whole is vastly superior to what has come before it. And I really think that a lot of people are getting more frustrated about this just because of how close it is to the Mac now, which I actually think is a testament to how good iOS 11 is, that people Mm. are getting more frustrated about how it's different to the (laughs) Mac because it is so good and it's so powerful. It's almost like an uncanny valley thing where people are less comparing it to what iOS 10 was and comparing it to what they think it should be because of how the Mac works. So. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I will agree with that 100% because there was no doubt in my mind that it's a bit of a frustration for me because, like, on, I don't know about you, but on the Mac, I'm a very heavy spaces user. Like, yeah, I, I am. I really like the ability to use lots of spaces. I think most heavy iOS users use the Mac that way. Hmm, that's, uh, maybe. And, and so, yes, it, it does invite that, comparison of on the mac it's much easier to be fussy about my spaces and which apps go in what spaces and then it feels like i'm I'm switching between a, a whole bunch of of different virtual desktops that have been left just the way i want them to be and so like i, I will i will completely agree with you on that 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 is it is impressive in a way that the comparison is now oh why can't i why can't i do this as as lightning fast as i can do it on a full desktop computer you and i have always acknowledged that there are there are many things on the ipad that we have always known it is it is slower to do but it doesn't change the fact that we like working on an ipad way better like and that has always been a that has always been a trade off that we're we're willing to make yeah like i know that dragging from the dock is slower than however any other system would use it even the previous system but i don't care because i enjoy it more i I like the multitasking because i'm multitasking with my hands like i like it i like the feeling of it but i i I understand i understand the concerns but like i think this is the best we could have got because any more than this would have been way too complicated like a jump Mm. bigger than the jump that apple have made here would have been too much, especially when at this stage that we're at right now, and we'll still be at for a few weeks as app updates come out, we haven't even realized the full potential of what this system is because we don't really have the opportunity to use drag and drop very heavily because the app support isn't there yet because they're not out yet. So I think that like there are still things that we've yet to fully appreciate for what this system mm-hmm. is doing. So I think any more than what Apple has added in 11 would have been way too complicated. Like the idea of having persistent pairs and having apps that can be open with other pairs in multiple instances inside of the multitasking pane, I think that kind of thing might come in the future. But if they would have put that in now, it would have been like a nightmare scenario to try and understand what was going on. I, I I will completely agree with that. My frustration is is simply the the thing that I was trying to remedy with the keyboard shortcut is mm-hmm. like I'm very used to just switching stuff fast with the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. And and my main frustration is is like I will happily learn complicated keyboard commands if it if it lets me move between a bunch of but like there's just right. no way to do that under the current system. Like, it's like Command Shift Alt Tab could change the left app or whatever. I think I had some great suggestions for app uh, shortcuts, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's, it's I think that that's one of the things that also just it feels like it slows it slows it down. But again, like, I, I keep thinking of the I, I, like I mentioned last time, like for for my aunt who uses an iPad Pro as her main computer. This is a hell of an upgrade and she is not a very technical user. But I think the system is brilliantly designed because I know it, it will take her no time at all to figure out what to do. You just move it with your hands like it's a physical object or ignore it completely. Right, you can ignore it completely if you don't notice it, and it's fine. Yeah, or yeah, it doesn't even matter. That's why, like, it's it is a great solution to a very difficult thing. I'm, I just, I just wish for pro users there was like a faster way to do more precise stuff. You've got some beautiful wallpapers on your iOS devices here, Mike. Can I just say that? <laughs> Thank you. Two of them are recreations of in 5K of old Apple Mac desktops which I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, Stephen Hackett and our amazing designer, Frank, put those together together. 
Uh, the one on my iPhone is actually a uh, Relay FM members exclusive wallpaper. So if you're a Relay FM member, you get loads of cool wallpapers. We're just doing another plug here, everybody. Uh, and you, yeah, you get <laughs> lovely wallpapers. And that's one for Remaster, which is the video game show that I do. You have that same black one on your phone that you've had forever, the the fractal one. Although it's it's better than whatever that out of time home screen was. That weird dusty thing. I and I'm assuming talking about. there was I didn't I hate not good. Uh, I assume that the <laughs> other two are both Apple's ones, right? I think that the, the, the that that beach one is too. Uh no, the beach one's not Apple's one. Mm-hmm. Uh the 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 paint splash is an Apple one. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like in in uh in beta season I'm I'm more daring with what wallpapers I might yeah, use on, on you're different wild devices. Right now. Yeah. So this is this is Grey Gone Wild with his wallpaper backgrounds. I think oh, after beta season is over, you know, we might we might calm down a little bit and go to something something more more buttoned down and business like. Mm-hmm. Uh but so where yeah. is the beach one from? Uh I I don't know actually where that that beach one is is oh. from i, I can't well, remember where i got that originally let's hope nobody wants it because if you don't know where it's from i can't give people the links this is why we're mentioning yeah. the wallpapers because people always want them uh, well, this is what reverse image search is for yep that's how people found the original one that you couldn't find <laughs> oh actually I, I i should i should make a plug uh because i don't think i've mentioned i don't think i've mentioned it on the show before but the iphone wallpaper it's done by this uh, designer who's made a whole series of black wallpapers, mm-hmm. and they are fantastic and great looking. And uh, so it's it's similar to the old one that I used to have. It's just less it's less contrasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's more subtle. And uh, I will uh, I'll put the link in the show notes for uh, the designer of that has a whole series of similarly great black wallpapers that uh, people should go check out. I want to thank Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of Cortex. If you just enter the code Cortex at checkout, you'll get 10% off your first purchase when you go sign up at squarespace.com. You can make your next move with Squarespace. They let you easily create the website that you have for your next idea, your next project, your next event, or even because you're fed up of the website that you currently have. Because Squarespace is so easy. Everything you need is right there. There's nothing to install, no patches to worry about, no upgrades needed. They're an all-in-one platform. No matter what type of website you want to build, whether it's a blog, portfolio, an online store, maybe a store for your band, your business, maybe even for your restaurant, it doesn't matter what it is. Squarespace have got you covered with their beautiful award-winning templates, their 24-7 customer support, and the ability to grab a domain name if you want it to keep everything nice and unique. I am using Squarespace right now to build a website for my upcoming wedding. So I'm getting married next year and we're going to want all of our guests to have all of the information that they need when that time is right. And we're able to do that with Squarespace. So we can set up all of the information. We can have RSVP details, everything all right there. They even have templates for it. Squarespace plans start to just $12 a month. You can start a trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com. Then when you decide to sign up, use the offer code Cortex to get 10% off your first purchase and show your support for this show. I would like to thank Squarespace for their continued support of Relay FM. Squarespace, make your next move, make your next website. Oh, Mike, I'm, ex- I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm sorry. I, re- I really am mm-hmm. because I feel like when we talk about these, I have to mentally go through all, all of my thoughts for the past many weeks about decisions. We, we barely touched the, touch this in, in the depth that I feel is adequate, but I, I cannot go on any further. We, we've had, we had topics planned for the show, which have all been destroyed mm-hmm. by home screen discussion, mm-hmm. uh, which always eats everything. Everything. And so what I really want to know about right now as we're ending the show is tell me more about your laundry. <laughs> I have a lot to say, believe it or not, about my laundry, because I'm back home now, and it was halfway <laughs> through my trip. So I needed to do more laundry before I got home. The continuing adventure of Mike's laundry. Yeah, I did laundry two more times, in fact. <laughs> okay, so when, when we last checked in mm-hmm. with your laundry, mm-hmm. you, you had 
asked for advice for people about what you were going to do. Yep. So what happened? What happened in America with, with your laundry? So, uh, remember last time I had done expensive hotel laundry and I had done one load of laundry at my co-founder's house using a machine I didn't understand. And that me and you were talking about the idea and how great it will be to use one of those apps, you know, like the laundry apps where they can pick up the laundry for mm-hmm. you. I have some bad news, Gray. All of the apps that I tried required a US telephone number for sign up. Okay. And I couldn't trick them. What do you mean by trick them? Like entering a random number or entering a number that was my number, but in some weird US format, because they all want to send you a text message to confirm the phone number to confirm sign up. Yeah, this is this is what Skype phone numbers are for. Hmm. No, I didn't think of that, did you? No, and you know what's really annoying is I actually set up a Skype telephone number two days ago because I needed it for a conference call, and Mm -hmm. I didn't put two and two together. Can Skype numbers receive text messages? I am fairly sure they can. Okay. And if they can't, I know a lot of these services do a fallback where they call and give you the PIN. Mm, Yeah, see, that would have been I know for a fact I have verified stuff that demands a u.s phone number with um my skype u.s phone number like i know i have done this yeah, okay you're making me slightly doubt myself about the text message but i know i have mm. used it to verify Can something you because the call fallback so this is this is a cgp gray brand life hack for everybody uh, out there in the world this, uh, this is good because this they're not cheap those skype numbers uh, but i do have one now because every now and then someone needs to call me I need to talk to someone on the phone and it's just like, oh, can we use Skype? And it's like, it's just like a whole big deal. But now I have a phone number that people can call. And with, I think it was with yeah. iOS 10, it, if I'm signed in on Skype, it just rings as if it's mm-hmm. normal. So yeah, that's good. I have that set up now. I didn't think of that at the time. Uh, so there, there you go. You either need that or you can't do it. Um, so when I was in Brooklyn, which by the way, I love Brooklyn, obviously. Uh, love Brooklyn. <laughs> wow. What a surprise. What a surprise. Surprise, surprise. Do, do you like Portland too, Mike? I like Portland. I like Brooklyn. I also stayed in the East, like the Lower East Side, like the East Village. Love that too, obviously. Yeah. Mm, wow. all, all good. All good stuff for Mike. Lots of Mikey things uh, in those places. Mm-hmm. Um, I took my clothes to a laundromat, like a laundromat that had a wash and fold service. I, I wasn't 100% sure what that meant, but I assumed what it meant was they would wash and fold my clothes. That's what it sounds like. It's what it sounds like, right? So I was like, I figure that this is what I'm looking for, right? But I'd never used one of these services before. So I just took my, I basically took my clothes in a bag into this place, making an assumption of what would occur. And I put it down. Mm-hmm. And I said, can you, can you take care of these? And they said, yes. And they gave me a piece of paper and that was it. And I was like, mm-hmm. all right, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, that cost me nine dollars that that load of clothes, and it was great, and I was very happy. And uh, it came back basically exactly the same as the hotel stuff, just not with a blue ribbon. So hmm. you know, you don't feel the need to bleep that number, Mike. Nine dollars? No, I'm fine you're with nine dollars. So you're gonna let that go through? Uh huh. There was an unexpected side effect of the last episode for me. Yeah. Something I didn't anticipate was the amount of direct messages I was going to get from friends asking me just one simple question. Can you guess what that question was? How much did you pay for your laundry? Yes. <laughs> Pretty much everybody that I know. Everybody wanted to know. Everyone wanted to know. Uh, and as I assumed would happen, all the listeners wanted to know too. Yeah, that's what you get for bleeping. Yep. I mean, I knew it would happen. I was fine with it. But then something really interesting happened in the Reddit thread. Someone with the username FunkU put together a Google form to employ the wisdom of the crowd, which I found out was like this, it's this uh, method of trying to guess something by using multiple people's guesses and you take the averages of the guesses and it gives Mm -hmm. you something which is expected to be correct. Mm -hmm. Now, this person put together this survey. They weeded out some of the more wild answers, which was probably the Mm -hmm. right thing to do, and came up with an answer of $153.21 over 183 responses. Mm -hmm. 
They then closed it down after that point just because they felt that they had a, a good sense of the answer from that point. Now, because this number was so close to the actual number, <laughs> I felt that it was only fair for me to confirm it. So the actual number that I paid for my laundry, dear listeners, was $116. That's pretty good for a wisdom of the crowd estimation. And I didn't want to share the number at the time or cold because I still believe if I would have said $116, I would have been inundated by people saying how ridiculous that is to spend on laundry. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But also, all of my friends that asked me, how much did you spend? I said to them, my first answer for everyone was, how much did you think? And everyone went mm -hmm. higher. So I still mm -hmm. believe that by not giving that number, everyone thought it was worse than it actually ended up being. Because I still think $116 is an embarrassing amount to spend on laundry, especially when I got the same amount done for $9. Uh, but I feel better about my $116 on the because most people thought it was 1000 which was right. wild to me. People kept thinking I spent $1,000. I would say keep the clothes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you can have them. I don't want them anymore. Take them. A thousand dollars? No, that's that's ludicrous. I, mean, I spent one hundred and sixteen was the amount. So you feel like you've done successful expectation management here? I do actually. I, I feel like I, I I I feel like I manage this best for my own personal well being. Mm -hmm. uh, one hundred and sixteen dollars was the amount. Congratulations to everybody for getting so close with one hundred and fifty three. So I assume that there was just a lot of people that have probably been through this themselves. I also did hear from a lot of people that have been through this themselves who had a, a guess of the amount because they know how much this stuff costs. So mm -hmm. I think this can close out the laundry now because I'm back at home and I'm doing my laundry at home of a machine that I understand. Um, and it's effectively free because right. our water is paid for by our building. So I don't need to pay the water bill. Um I guess it's just the electric that powers the washing. Anyway, I expect it's less than nine dollars alone. <laughs> what do you, what do you want? To, you're, are you walking? You're walking us into a kilowatt hour cost conversion calculation nah. here. Is that what I you're, that's I what really you're going towards? That. We're all good. I, I'm cool with what it's costing me at home. Um, but there we go. So that's the laundry. I'm glad you're back to your front-loaded washer. Oh, it's Mike. just so much more easy to understand. I used another one of those uh, top-loading washers. With some with some more friends because we went for a vacation with friends, and I still don't understand it. I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. There's like this big wheel, and it has like a million options on it. I just I don't. Get I think it. we're just going to have to put this aside as as cultural differences, Mike. It is. Oh, hundred percent. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying I don't understand it. You know, in the same way that I would imagine people that are used to the top loading machines have to take some time to understand the front loading machines because they're different. They're not that different. Uh, I want to just, before we before we finish today, Gray, I want to thank everybody who signed up to become a Relay FM member. Um, we mentioned it on the last episode so people could get access to Spooky Manor, our wonderful text adventure special members-only podcast. You can still sign up if you want to. You can go to relay.fm slash membership. You can sign up. Uh, you can support this show. We would love that. You can support any Relay FM show. You'll get the bonuses. You'll get the wallpapers that I mentioned earlier. Um, as well, I will put a link in the show notes to an amazing video trailer, which gives a, a sense of the, the audio from last time, but also some fun visuals as well. Um, you can still sign up and still get access to it if you want to. Um, and you can sign up at any point. If you're listening to this episode in like a year in the future, from when from this date you can still sign up at relay.fm slash membership and you'll get access to all those episodes so you can do that you get this year's and you'll get last year's fun text adventure along with a lot of other really good relay fm bonuses that have come out so please feel free and thank you if you have signed up i just want to say thank you to everybody who signed up as well uh we really appreciate it and i also i also want to specifically say a, re a real thanks to you mike and to jason snell for all of the work that you two put into that episode. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a thing where I get to just show up and I, I, I have a lot of fun doing those episodes, but I, I, I just, I always feel the need to reemphasize. Like I, like I am so aware that those, those member episodes work because Jason does 
just such a fantastic job of being the computer, being the parser. Like that is that is a, a much more imaginative role than it may seem to the listener, yeah. like the things that he has to keep track of and all of the work he has to do live while we are recording. So I really appreciate that. And to you, Mike, uh, for the, I, I'm going to say, insane amount of editing you do to these these member shows all of the the special effects that you add all of the atmospheric sound effects which which people might not even notice when they're listening but really add to the feel of the show uh it's it's so i i am very grateful to the tremendous amount of work that the two of you are putting into these shows and and i think it it would it's what makes them fun to do and i have to say it makes them really great to listen to like i i have listened to both of our member episodes multiple times just just out of enjoyment like it's like oh is this work am i listening for edits like oh i'm just listening because i like it like they're yeah they're they're great shows and there's a there's a lot of man hours that have gone into them uh so thank you for all the work that you do on that it's a pleasure genuinely it's a pleasure because i i really really love doing them <laughs> 